This is episode number 51 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is episode number 51 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. Even though Topaz are not going to update this piece of software, which hopefully at some point they'll decide that was a mistake and they'll go ahead and do it. I'm going to keep working with this great piece of software. And today I'm going to make another painting. This one's going to be a little different because I'm doubling up filters. I'm using the impression filter two different times. I'm using the um, remix filter a couple different times and I'm adding a texture. It's really not a hard image to make but just follow my steps and you'll see how creative you can be when you double up on filters in Topaz Studio 2. By the way you can still purchase Topaz Studio 2 so if you like this piece of software might not be a bad idea to grab it. And you could save an additional uh, 15% off this or any piece of Topaz software using my promo code David Kelly. That saves you 15% off anything Topaz makes, including their bundled software. Again, the promo code is David Kelly. If you're thinking about purchasing Topaz Studio 2, I would click on try for free just to make sure it works on your computer. I wouldn't want you to purchase something that doesn't work. And then if it does, then to purchase it, use my promo code and you'll save that extra 15% off, which is David Kelly. All right, then let's turn this bird into a piece of digital art using Topaz Studio to my creative toolbox. And as I said, this is a stock image. I have a link provided for you in the description below this video where you can download it. The only thing I did to it was cropped it. Here's what it looks like originally, and here's what it looks like after my crop. Now that's totally up to you if you want to crop it or not. I went ahead and made a copy of my background layer and called it TS2 Creative Toolbox. And now I'm going to come up here to filter and we're going to go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2 and we will get started. We're going to start out by coming up to add filter and coming down to stylistic and we will uh, open up the impression filter. Now I'm not doing much in here and what I'm using is in terms of a brush and we have all these different brushes that we can choose from. And when I was making the initial edit before I did the tutorial. I ended up using this brush here, Type 03. I use this brush quite a bit and it's a nice one, but you'll notice, uh, can you see these little white flecks in here? And I usually show you this and I generally do this in all my tutorials. Let's come down to texture and open that up and come the whole way to the bottom and go from solid to original. And watch how these white flecks disappear as soon as I click on original. You see that? Okay, and that's what I'm doing there to get rid of the white flex. And now I'm just going to make a couple simple adjustments here. Number of strokes, right now it's on medium. Let's put it on high and you can see the difference there. It takes on a slight painterly quality, but yet it still looks more photographic to me. So I want to go more artsy on this one more painterly. Now I'm going to change my strokes to low. Now when I do that, notice how we get a lot more paint strokes and I like that a lot better. But this is only a starting point and let me see, is there anything else I did here? Yeah, the only other thing I think I did was I took my paint opacity and drug this up to like, I think around a 74. And when I do that, you notice how my strokes come out a lot more. But I did do one more thing, and I almost forgot. I took my brush size and brought it back a little bit, just a little bit, back to like around a 0.41. And I could stop right here because it looks cool, but let's keep on going. I wanted to get a little bit more creative today, so I went and added another filter, and that's an AI Remix filter, which typically I would not use after an impression filter, but I thought, give it a try. I played around with a whole bunch of these different Remix mix looks and I ended up with this one ashen wave so I clicked on here and I thought oh that looks pretty cool but it's way too strong so what I did with it was first off I changed the uh, blend mode from normal to luminosity okay and now you can see all the color is coming through when I do that but I still have those really cool you know like textured looking looks to the image. But then I took the opacity and I pulled it back a lot, back to like around a 0.15. But you see how nice it's looking now? Let me shut this eye off. Here's the before and here's the after. 
but it's taking on a little bit of a different appearance here. It's a subtle change, but I like it. Let me go ahead and open up this AI remix layer again, and let me just play around with the style strength. Now this is low. Let's check out the medium style strength. Yeah, I get a little bit more of the line showing through, and let's try high and see the difference. Okay, high's not bad either, but I think I'm going to go back to medium. But play with these opacities and play with your blend modes, and you just never know what kind of effects you're going to get when you try all these different AI remix styles. But try them out. There's a lot in here, but let's keep going. Next, I think I'm going to do another AI remix filter. All right, here we go. Let's add another AI remix. The cool thing about Topaz Studio 2, you can stack these filters one upon another. Now, I started out with Impression, then I went to AI Remix. Now, I'm doing another AI Remix, and you get some really different effects when you click through these. And a lot of times, you'll say, well, what the heck can I do with that, Dave? But you know what? If you take this opacity and you draw it way back, now, all of a sudden, you've got a nice-looking piece of art, right? So, the secret here with working with Topaz Studio 2 is you've got to experiment. Believe me, it's just not going to come to you just right out of the gate. You got to work with it, okay? You got to play with your blend modes like here. Like I could try like a multiply blend mode on there and maybe pull up my opacity and you see the different kind of looks I get. Now, it depends what you're looking for. But again, experimentation is the key. Now, that's not what I want. I'm going to go back to... A normal blend mode and I'm gonna bring my opacity the whole way up but the, this time I'm gonna use this guy right here called baby blues I know and it looks weird and it looks not so nice right but watch what happens when I pull back this opacity back is I keep going and I eventually stopped at like 0.27 okay and I like it and the other thing I want to do is bring up a little bit more saturation. So I'm going to take this saturation and drag it up. And I'm going to take it up to right about here. Okay. So here's the before and here's the after. And I know you're thinking that's interesting, but where's it going with this? And I'm glad you asked, but I think I'm going to try another impression filter. And just in case you're wondering, well, how do you derive that, Dave? How do you know you want an impression filter? Well, I'm just looking at the picture and I like it. And it's very abstract at this point. And I'm thinking, this is really cool. And I could save it out here back into Photoshop and save it at that point. And then I could bring it back in again and then try something else like the impression filter. But I'm just experimenting just to see where I can go. And that's part of the joy of editing, just trying different things. Okay, so I'll add filter, come down to stylistic. We'll do another impression filter. And I'm going to be simple here. I'm going to leave this stroke on one. I'm going to take the paint opacity and drag it up to maybe right around here. And I like that. I think that's looking really good. And then the only other thing I want to do is take the, the spill and bring it back just a little bit, just so things aren't spilling out so much. So I'll take that spill and I'll move it to the right. And you can see how the paint spills out. Okay, so I don't want it to spill out too much. So I'm going to bring it back to like a, eh, right about here, a 0.38, a minus 0.38. And I'm going to make sure I don't have any white flecks in here. So I'm going to do that thing I did on the original uh, impression filter. And that is to open up texture and, and to come down and click original. And that just gets rid of any canvas that may be showing through. That's something I do pretty much all the time when I'm working with the impression filter. And believe it or not, that's all I'm going to do. But let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. But you see how... We now have some more paint strokes. Things are a little smoother. I still have a nice abstract look, and I'm really loving it so far. But I think I'm going to try one more thing, and that's adding some texture over the top of this. And I think that will seal the deal for me, but we'll find out here in a minute. But before I move on, I'm going to open up the this last impression filter again. I know I said I was done there, but gee, I forgot to check my number of strokes. Right now I'm on medium. Now let's take a look at high. Okay. And now let me try low. 
And low, I just like it. My eye says low is the one, so I'm going with low. And now for the texture. Come up to add filter, and it will be the last filter inside of stylistic texture. So we're going to click on that. And the texture I want is this one right here, concrete. So let me click on that. And already you can see it, it kind of has like a uh, paper, like a parchment paper look to it, which I really like. But let me change the blend mode. Blend modes and textures, they work hand in hand. When you hover over the blend mode, you can see the result. But I like that multiply blend mode. So multiply, screen's another good one, but that's too light. Let's try overlay, that's another good one, and here's soft light. Now, if I go with overlay, I'd probably have to take the opacity, which defaults at around 50, and move it the whole way to the right. But no, I don't like that. I'm going to go back to multiply. That was the one that was working for me. Now, that's too strong, so I'm going to pull this opacity back and stop when I think it looks the best. And it's best not to overdo these things, but you want it to look nice. And I think right there around like a 0.40 looks good. It kind of looks like a almost like a watercolor type image to me at this point, and I really like that. Now the multiply blend mode will darken things down, and this image looks a little light, so I'm just gonna drag it a little bit more to the right, I think, just to darken it a little bit more. And yeah, actually I like it better here at like 0.53. Now here's without the texture, and here it is with, but you see how much my image has changed? by adding that texture and again I may open this up and maybe just pull this back to maybe a 50 just to lighten it up just a little bit more right there again here is the before and here's the after but that texture in my opinion really finishes this off beautifully if you want that texture to show through a little bit more you could come here and open up the texture filter there's a bunch of other controls in here as well like a brightness adjustment contrast detail and saturation i'm going to take the detail and just drag it to the right a little bit and when i do see how i can bring out a little bit more of that detail and i might just do that i just like that little extra roughness it has that paper quality to me and i really like it and at this point, I may just take this brightness and drag it up a little bit as well. Okay, just a tiny wee bit to like a 0 0.10. Again, here is the before and here's the after. Now, if we left click on this image and hold our mouse down, here's the original image. And when I release my mouse, here is the final result. And I'm happy with it. And now all I need to do is click accept and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. Now here in Photoshop, we are on this layer, right? Called TS2 Creative Toolbox. We have this opacity and we can take this opacity and we can drag this back if we feel our effect is too strong and let some of that original image show through if you like, which is kind of nice. You can see some of the feathers are showing through there. But for me, I think I'm going to take it I'll take it back a little bit, but I just think like I'm going to take 10% off. So now it's at 90%. So here is the before and here is the after. But what do you think? I'm really happy with the way this turned out. There's one final thing I want to do. I'm going to zoom into the bird's head. And do you see right here this little yellowish coloration here? I'm going to get rid of that with a stamp tool and fill this little area in here as well. I'm just going to grab a blank pixel there and click the plus right here. That puts a blank pixel there. Get your stamp tool, your clone stamp. You can type your S key to get it. I'm going to make a smaller brush size here and hold your alter option key down and sample an area like right here. And make sure you have under sample current and below uh, set up. You can click here and you can see you have current layer, current and below or all layers. You can do either current below or all layers. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paint this right here because it makes it look like the bird's head is just protruding out there a little bit too much. And then I'm going to option or alt click right here and just fill in this little yellow area right here. And even that little bit of a brown line right there and get rid of that. And I think that looks better. Let me go ahead and zoom back out. Yeah, and I'm happy with that. Let me shut this layer off. 
There's a before and there's after. I just think that looks a little better, and I'm happy with that. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.